someone once said to me, <laughs> when the agency book a driver, Kate, they just want a driver, but you like bring the whole circus with you. <laughs> Kate is a truck driver from Bournemouth. She's been behind the wheel for just over two years. While she loves it, it's not always easy being a woman in a male-dominated world. Sometimes it can be hard, especially if you, you know, you're getting a lot of flack off the guys. But then, generally, I just give them as much as they give me. <laughs> I was working for a company in Andover and I was on the tippers. The guy that was on site come flying over to me, waving his arms and shouting and screaming at me, effing and going, park over there, park over there. If you can't park there, go on, go off, he's saying. And I've looked and I've said, what's your problem, mate? And he's effing and going at me, you bloody woman, if you can't park there, get off my site. Because I was a woman, I got treated a lot differently there. Um, had that been a guy, he probably would have gone out and smacked him, to be fair. <laughs> It's a real catch-22, you know, because I don't want to sit and do nothing and just claim benefits off the government because I'm not like that. I am a worker, but I can't go to work full-time because I'm a single mother and I have a child and I don't have the luxury of a, you know, a close-knit family and friends circle. I just want to be me. I want to go to work. I want to earn my money. I want to drive my trucks. I want to look after my kids. I want to be left alone. That's it. You know, that is it. What you see is actually what you get. I am what I am. Thank you, truck. See you tomorrow. <laughs> Kezia is Kate's nine-year-old daughter and her top priority. She's brilliant. She loves the lorries. She actually stood up in assembly and told everyone <laughs> that mum's a truck driver. She's really proud. It's nice. It's nice that she's proud of me, you know. Once Kate arrives home, she wastes no time hunting down the next employment opportunity. Any experience is valuable. But do you, I mean, I'll do it for free. I'll, I'll work the day for free. In April 2010, Kate, along with her husband Daryl and daughter Kezia, moved into a council flat. This is still her family home. Daryl was a doorman in Bournemouth for 30 odd years. Um, really well known, really well liked, very well respected. He was in the gym and just said to me, oh, you know, hi, how are you? Have you got a boyfriend yet? And, you know, jokingly I said, oh no. And then he said, oh, do you want one? And that's how we got together. And he was just a lovely, lovely guy. My dad was very happy um, we had lots of fun together and he was just amazing. In early 2011, doctors diagnosed Daryl with heart failure, leading to numerous treatments at Harefield Hospital. He had a triple heart bypass, he also had stents fitted um, and a pacemaker. And then the final option that they had was that he was to have a heart transplant. Daryl was fitted with a left ventricular assist device which kept the blood flowing around the body whilst he waited for a transplant. Although this pump was keeping Daryl alive, it was also hindering his family life. You know, when Daryl used to take her out, obviously he couldn't walk as fast or play football and things like that um, because he always had to have this pump with him. I always looked out for him and we went up to the hospital and I sat with him on the bed, I talked to him and yeah. On 16th of September 2012, roughly about two in the morning, um, all hell broke loose, really, is all like, the only way I can describe it. Our daughter, who was four and a half then, got out of bed to go to the toilet. He got out of bed to take her back to bed um, and he dropped the control box that was keeping him alive. The alarm went off and the noise, it was horrific. The alarm was still going off nearly two hours later at the hospital. They couldn't shut it up. When the paramedics came, they actually brought him from this room out into the hallway because we had a lot of uh, weightlifting equipment and he was here on the floor um, and they worked on him out here for a considerable time, to be fair. When he went into my mum's room, 
and he collapsed. All I could vision was him on the floor and not breathing, so it was really scary, yeah. And it, you could almost see the colour draining from him because obviously this pump kept his heart going. So the minute that pump stopped working, his heart stopped beating, basically. Even if he'd have been in hospital, they never would have opened him up and corrected the problem in time. It was just one of those things. Look at you. So rude. Well, how rude? What do you mean, look at you? What's wrong with me? You're like... Well, yeah, I'm like, well, yeah, I'm probably drunk, aren't I? Yeah, you are, I expect. I made a promise to Kez that after her dad died that I would drive a tractor unit from Bournemouth up to Harefield Hospital. We'd do some fundraising just as a thank you really for everything that they did for him. It's Wednesday and Kate is continuing preparations for the drive which is taking place this coming Saturday. She has set up a Just Giving page and shared it across her social media platforms. Her story quickly spread online, garnering attention from celebrities, press and the trucking community. Overnight, donations came flooding in, bringing the total charity fund up to £350. Mm. Oh, that's a nice bag. Oh, wow, look, polo shirts. Volvo kindly sent some jackets and polo shirts. Kate auctioned these off on her trucking Facebook group, raising the charity fund up to £500. Everybody's just been amazing. They really have. Really, really looking forward to this. Just hope the weather holds for us. Bournemouth is expecting snowfall for the first time in five years. This is causing some concern for the drive on Saturday. Dog's coming out. What do you think, Kez? Do you reckon this is going to stay like this or do you think we'll be all right for Saturday in our drive? It's not looking good at the minute, mate, is it? I think it's going to stay like this. Well, we've got two days yet, so hopefully it will clear. Good evening and welcome to the BBC News at six. A red alert, meaning there is a risk to life. The icy grip of the beast from the east. The snow is continuing to fall. As ice and accidents close roads. Leaving hundreds of drivers stranded in sub-zero temperatures. Dorset, that's to us. They are. If a snow plough can't get through, no one's getting through. I mean, even these trucks, and you know, you get one of them sliding, you ain't going to stop it. It's it's, da it's just so dangerous. It is not worth it. It really isn't worth it. Treacherous conditions have left Kate with no other option but to cancel the drive. Despite being determined to keep her promise to Kez, she was left uncertain as to whether it would all fall in place for the second time. I'll make it happen. It's taken me nearly six years to get to this point. Ain't no snow going to stop me doing it. We will go to Harefield and Kez will donate that money that we have made. So, high five. We met up with Kate two weeks later. It's now Friday and she has managed to reorganise the charity drive. That's what I passed my test in. There, let's see who's driving it. Hang on, let me get alongside and give him a tootie tootie too. So we've come to see the truck that we'll be taking up to Harefield tomorrow. And there she is. This is the first time I've seen it in person. I mean, look at it. It's stunning. I mean, what a beautiful bit of kit to um, make that final journey in, isn't it? It's beautiful, more than I expected. It really is. Kate has been informed that due to insurance, she would not be able to drive the truck the entirety of the way. Really gutting, but ultimately I'm still doing what I said I would do, which was to get a truck and go from Bournemouth to Harefield. It is the day of the drive. The charity fund is up to £770, exceeding the original goal of £500. Nervous now, because it's like a big thing, isn't it? When Daryl was ill and we used to have the ambulances come, the amount of people, honestly, that used to come over, you'd have all the kids at the double doors like this looking through, do you know what I mean? See who it is, see what's going on. So, you know, when this thing rocks up. <laughs> so we're just waiting for the truck now, which should be here. Any minute. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> There's two! <laughs> How you doing, Larry? <laughs> oh, hey. oh, man. 
Now you've got me because I wasn't <laughs> expecting to. Just getting a selfie of both lorries. <laughs> oh man, I can't believe he gave us two. You kept that quiet. With the arrival of Dorset Police and Fire Brigade, everything was in place and the convoy was ready to set off. With a three hour drive to London ahead, Kate was getting ever closer to fulfilling her promise to Kez. It's sort of getting a little bit real now, do you know what I mean? It's been more than what I could imagine. Honestly, I am so touched by everything that everybody's done. Seriously, people have just been amazing, brilliant, and it, yeah, it's absolutely all been worth it. So yeah, it's, um, it's all going well, but it's hitting home now. <laughs> At the hospital, Kate was met by a fellow trucker. He donated a hundred pounds, bringing the total up to 870. As Kate was presenting the money to the staff at Harefield, she was met with yet another act of kindness. Oh, I shall I? A thousand for you. What? Yeah, I sent it up to the ground floor. 70, I sent it to the 60 there. I sent it up to the ground floor. Thank you. That's all right. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, eh? thank you. See, that's how they're generous here. Jesus, that's a thousand pounds. Well done. See, it's been six years, nearly six years, trying to get this to happen. This is closure now. Thank you for everything you did. Thank you. And honestly, all right. Oh, well, I did it, I did it, I did what I said I was going to do. 